Hey everyone, it's Kenji. Uh, today we're gonna make some black bean burgers. And I'm talking like really good black bean burgers. These are, these are burgers that are so good you're gonna wanna like put bacon and cheese on them. Uh, they're not, they're not vegan, but they are vegetarian. Um, there's a couple tricks here. So first I'm gonna start actually, I'm gonna start with a couple of cans of black beans. <clears throat> the real trick, this is a recipe I developed for Serious Seats a few years back. Um, lots of experimentation. The real trick uh, to these burgers is that rather than just incorporating the black beans as is, the way most black bean burger recipes go, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna drain. Got two 15 ounce cans here, by the way, so we're gonna drain them, and rinse them. Um, I'm just putting water in the can to get any of the stray beans stuck off the bottom. Rinse them, they don't have to be rinsed like super well, but you want most of that like starchy water off of them. That's good enough. Give them a little shake. I'm gonna take a sheet tray. Okay, and I'm gonna spread them out in a single layer. And then I'm gonna put them in a preheated oven. So this oven is heated to 350 degrees. And we're gonna leave them in there. So we're not gonna really roast them. What we're trying to do is we're kind of, we're gonna try and kind of dehydrate them a little bit. Um, so it's gonna take about 20 minutes in there. Um, and in the meantime, I'm gonna get some other ingredients going. So it's gonna take 20 minutes and what's gonna happen, you'll see is that the beans, um, so normal black bean burgers, I find they get kinda mushy. They get a kinda mushy texture. Um, these ones don't, they have a nice kind of bite to them. And the reason they do is because we dehydrate the, be the beans. Um, and so they get that kind of meaty texture to them. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm getting an onion. And then you want to split it pole to pole like this and then pull, pull off the outer layers, not just the skin. You want to get that first layer underneath the skin also because it's usually pretty tough. Make our horizontal cut, or our, sorry, our vertical cuts first. When I make my vertical cuts, I think I said this in another video though, but a friend of mine, a, uh, I have a, my mathematician friend who um, I, he helped me build a, um, a computer model of an onion that simulates um, an onion and basically what it does is it, it, it lets you calculate um, how even the size of the pieces you get will be um, when you cut it to various, uh, cut it in various ways. So some people say to cut straight up and down, some people say to cut radially toward the center. Um, what we discovered was that if you're looking at the onion like this, um, so if you imagine the onion is a circle and say that it has a radius of one, um, what, what you wanna do is look for a point below the cutting board that's about 0.6. So it's basically the golden ratio, so like one to 1 1.6. Um, so it's about, you know, about 0.6 the distance down below the top of the cutting board. And that's where you wanna aim your knife. If, if you want uh, to get the most even number, um, sorry, the most even sized pieces with the fewest number of cuts. Um, I don't actually really do that because I don't really care if my onions are that perfectly precise, but the, the math, I, maybe I'll share that mathematical model sometimes, but the math showed that both people who say going straight up and down and people who say go radially to the center are actually, both of them are equally incorrect as far as the most efficient way to cut an onion. Um, you're looking for the golden ratio there. <clears throat> Anyhow, so I got onion. Um, normally what I would do also is um, I would cut up a poblano pepper. Um, but instead today I have these roasted um, hatch chilies that I did over the over the, the uh, charcoal grill um, the other day. So normally I would be sauteing a poblano pepper that I've um, also um, diced along with this. Couple tablespoons of oil. And go with the onions. And a pinch of salt. That helps draw out some of the liquid in them um, and gives them, you know, gives them a little bit of a head start as far as sauteing goes. Okay, while that's cooking down, I'm gonna get three cloves of garlic. Smash, smash, smash. I might speed up some of this part because it's not really that exciting to watch me um, chopping up some garlic. 
this burger is delicious and it's good even for even for omnivores or even for carnivores even a t-rex would like this burger it's good for t-rexes and for hippodracos and for pachycephalosaurus those are my daughter's current three favorite dinosaurs are t-rexes hippodracos pachycephalosaurus Um, if you don't want to chop garlic by hand, there are other ways you can do this. You could also do it in a mortar and pestle, um, which works fine for this, or you can do it in a garlic press. Um, the only thing I would avoid doing is getting pre-minced garlic. Um, any sort of pre-prepared garlic product, um, it, it's not gonna, it's never gonna have the same sort of flavor that fresh garlic has. Um, it's gonna actually have more of the sort of off flavors, um, it's going to lose its potency, and it's not going to have as many of the sort of fresh, sweet allium flavors, which are kind of more of what, well, more of what I want. You know, that said, if, you, if you've if you used jarred garlic in the past, jarred chopped garlic in the past, and you like it, then don't let me stop you from continuing to use it. Oh, this is, if, astute viewers might note that this pan right here, um, was one of the pans that was in my giveaway pile. Um, what I ended up doing with those pans is I gave them away to my staff um, at my restaurant. So the back of the house staff and the servers, everyone got to take home a piece. But uh, this is that Australian um, cast iron pan, the Aus Ion pan um, that, well, the founder of the company who um, who makes them saw my piece um, saying that I was gonna give them away and, and implored me to try using them again. Um, and so I said I would, and so I have. And so this one I've actually seasoned um, by running it through the oven uh, with a thin layer of oil a few times. Um, the, way, the way you do it is you, you rub in some oil and then you basically take a clean towel and you wipe off the oil. Um, and the, the trick is you wanna, you wanna wipe out the oil as if you feel like you've made a mistake and you shouldn't have put the oil in there. So you try your best to get all the oil out um, and then you bake it for an hour at um, around 450 degrees. Um, let it cool down in there. So what I do is I do, I do that at night. Um, bake it at 450 degrees and then shut off the oven before I go to, go to bed. Cools down in there overnight. And then you repeat the process um, for multiple days in a row. I did it for one week, so seven coats of oil. Um, and that's how you get this really nice sort of slick, dark black layer of seasoning um, from all that polymerized oil in there. Um, just, I would do the same thing for carbon steel. Um, you know, the other good way to season the carbon steel, I'm sorry, for cast iron, the other good way to season the cast iron or carbon steel pan um, is to just cook in it a lot. Um, so cooking a lot, especially um, at the start, you want to cook a lot of, um, uh, you want to make sure you fry in it a lot. So shallow fry or deep fry a lot. Um, and don't really, don't, don't do any sort of simmering, and especially don't simmer any acid in it for the first few times you use it, at least until it gets a good, um, a good layer of seasoning on it. All right, so next what we're gonna do, the other ingredients we got. Well, that onion cooks down. About three quarters of a cup of toasted cashews. That's about three quarters of a cup. Yeah, a little bit more. Roasted cashews, these are just plain old salted roasted cashews. And I'm gonna pulse those. So the reason you pulse instead of just running the, the food processor straight is that if you run the food processor straight, what happens is the um, pieces of cashew or whatever it is you're trying to chop up, um, the pieces end up sort of riding um, around the blade and they don't chop evenly. So like the bigger pieces will end up riding around the top of the blade um, and you end up with sort of like some pasty bits and some whole cashews. Um, whereas um, when you pulse, you get more even chopping. I mean, obviously it's still not perfectly even as you can see, but um, it's a lot more even than you would get as if, if you um, were to simply run the, uh, run the thing as is. All right, pulsed up cashews. That's gonna give it some more texture. Um, so I sauteed my onions first. If I had a poblano, I would also do that at the same time. Um, I added in my garlic once my onion was mostly softened. And then once you start stirring in the garlic and it really comes in contact with the heat, you really only want to cook it for maybe 20 to 30 seconds, just until you start smelling that nice garlic aroma. Um, you don't need to go any more than that. And in fact, if you go too much more than that, 
Um, garlic tends to burn faster than onions do, which is why um, you add them sort of just to the very end. Um, and you don't really want to... Once your garlic's there, you don't really want to give it too much more time in the pan. Yeah, that's actually a pretty nice pan. Um, I think I'm probably still going to end up giving them away just because I'm, I'm purging. But um, I would recommend that. I would recommend those um, Asayan pans. This is a chipotle pepper, which is a um, a chipotle is a smoked jalapeno, a smoked red jalapeno pepper. That's all it is. Um, and you can buy them dried chipotle peppers, but I usually buy them um, canned in adobo sauce, which is a sort of vinegary, a vinegary sauce. Um, just because of the convenience, um, they're very easy to store. Uh, I have like I always have a couple cans in my pantry. They're easy to incorporate into dishes. Um, they're delicious. And even once they're opened, um, I, I'm going to transfer this to a separate container, like a little deli container, and put it in the fridge, or maybe a mason jar and put it in the fridge. Um, and it'll last for, for months and months. That adobo sauce is salty and vinegary, so um, it basically acts as a natural preservative. All right. Now that this is done, um, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until my uh, black beans are done uh, and I will come back when that happens. So I will come back in 10 minutes. All right, so, um, sorry, sun is moving. I got this uh, big screen up here this time because I've been bothered by the shadows, the bright sunlight on my, uh, work surface um, has screwed up the video. Anyhow, it's been another 10 minutes. So this is about 20 minutes total. Um, and this is what your beans are gonna look like. So you see that? You see how they're kind of splitting open and a little dry? Um, that is what you're looking for. Here's a, let me see if I can get a closer look. Can you see? I think you can see. Um, all right, so now I'm gonna set this aside to cool just a little bit. Um, and in the meantime, you know what I'm gonna do is I've decided I'm gonna make a little, um, Chipotle mayonnaise to go on this. Um, so mini chopper, you can either do it in your food processor or like with a hand blender. You can also do it by hand. Um, mini chopper, clove of garlic. I'll grab a, another chipotle. Drop them in there. Some of that liquid. And then I'm gonna take some mayonnaise. Um, and actually, meantime, I'm going to take, I'm going to also add about, um, add a couple tablespoons of mayonnaise to the, uh, the burger mixture. That's what's going to help it bind. Um, but for this, let's do about, it was one chipotle and like a couple teaspoons, maybe a tablespoon of sauce. And I'm going to do maybe about a third of a cup, maybe half a cup of mayonnaise in there. This stuff is, um, delicious on burgers, it's delicious on tacos, especially fish tacos, it's great on fish tacos, it's great on grilled fish, um, great on grilled vegetables to dip into, um, it's great on sausages and hot dogs, things like that. Um, it's just one of those condiments that um, once you taste it, you're, you're gonna be like, mmm, mmm, why, why did I not do this? Why did I not do this before? Or if I ha did do this before, why have I not been doing it more frequently? Um, that's what I always say. If you're the kind of person who likes to count, if you're a bean counter, you want to make sure that you only have 239 of them because otherwise, otherwise your burgers are too farty. And the rest of that will go in the fridge. This stuff will stay, keep in the fridge for, um, I mean, basically as long as mayo does, at least as long as mayo. So, you know, several weeks, if not longer. So now these are going to go into the food processor. So they are, you can, you can kind of hear them, how, how nice and dry they are. Um, so they're, you know, they're still a little moist in the center, but the edges, you know, they're, they're split open. The edges are starting to dry out a little bit and they're gonna, what they get is like a really nice sort of chew to them. Also gonna grab some cotija cheese. You can use feta cheese. Um, you could also use something like Pecorino uh, Romano. I'm do about, let's say about half cup once crumbled, so. Two to three ounces would be my my estimate. I'll link to this full recipe, by the way. This is a recipe, it's on Serious Eats. You can get the full recipe for free. All right, so you want to pulse it just a few times. That looks good. 
And then we go straight into the mixture with the onions. We're done with the food processor. Now a couple more things go in there. So these panko, panko breadcrumbs, about, about half a cup, maybe three quarters of a cup. This is gonna be enough to make six to eight burgers or so, at least. Um, an egg. Oh, and I'm gonna add these roasted hatch chilies. So you can, what I, like I said, you can start with um, a raw poblano pepper and um, saute it along with the onion at the start. Um, or you can use um, these, you know, fire roasted, you know, your homemade fire roasted Anaheim or hatch chilies, these are hatch. Um, Hatch Anaheim's, same 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 variety of pepper, um, New Mexico pepper, uh, or you can use if you want. You can also use a can of um, chopped green chilies. Um, you can find those easily, easily in the international section of any pretty much any supermarket. I've never seen a supermarket that doesn't carry them. Maybe maybe very very small ones, or maybe in certain parts of the country that I'm unfamiliar with. But um, every every supermarket anywhere I've lived has always carried them. All right, and that is our mix. So you just kind of want to fold everything together just until it sort of forms a cohesive, homogeneous mass. And this mixture you can make ahead. Um, so I'm probably actually not gonna, I'll cook one right now just to show you and just for my own personal lunch. But um, my wife is cooking dinner tonight, so I'm gonna leave this mixture in the fridge until tomorrow um, when I'll feed my family with it tomorrow. Um, it'll actually be, become easy, sort of a little bit easier to handle even the second day as, a, as the breadcrumbs and everything starts to sort of rehydrate a little bit. It becomes a little bit more cohesive. It smells really good. All right, can make, so it's much easier to form patties or balls with wet hands. I'm gonna go for about, about four ounces. That looks about right. Um, and these patties, unlike a, you know, a meat patty, they don't really, they don't really shrink. Um, when you cook them so you can make them just about you know the size that you want them to be um, So what I do is make them slightly Slightly wider than my actual bun. All right, let's go outside now. Okay. All right, so this girl is preheating over uh, high heat or medium sort of moderately high heat For a few minutes Now you want to brush one side with salt Or sorry brush one side with oil carefully pick it up and put it that side down and what we're gonna do is we're gonna brush that second side with oil now and it's just gonna help it brown a little bit and season it you know I'll get my bun toasting as well um, I don't know if you noticed when I was inside but I um, I had that uh, carbon steel pan um, on the burner uh, after I'd used it earlier. So what I did was I basically wiped it out, cleaned it out with soap and water. Um, you, can use, you can use soap on a uh, carbon steel or cast iron. It's not gonna get rid of the coating. Um, it's not gonna get rid of the seasoning. Um, soaps, so old fashioned soaps that have lye, those could eat through the, um, the polymerized coating of um, the polymerized coating that the polym polymerized coating that um, makes the seasoning on cast iron or carbon steel um, but modern soaps don't have lye in them they're just detergents uh, that act on fats um, so um, those are not going to actually eat away at your seasoning at all all they're going to do is get rid of the excess fat on your pan which is um, what you do want to do so what I do is I wipe them out clean them uh, with soap and water if necessary uh, then I put them right back over a burner I turn the burner on and I let it dry out over the heat um, and then I generally let it keep keep on heating until it's sort of lightly smoking um, and then at the very end I'll rub in a little bit of oil just to keep the surface protected um, and that's how you keep your seasoning nice between uh, between uses all right, let's get in there. Good looking bun. A little bit more time on there.
Um, cast uh, grill grates, by the way, are very similar to carbon steel or cast iron in that you can season them. So the more you cook on them, the better they're going to get. Um, and you know, a lot of people recommend cleaning your grill grates after you're done cooking. Um, I actually find it's much easier to clean them uh, the next time. You know, you can give them a good once over with the grill brush if you want, um, but I find it's much easier to clean them the next time you start cooking. You preheat your grill. Um, once it's nice and hot, then um, all the sort of crud that was left over from the last time you cooked is very easy to, to, um, to get off. Uh, it comes right off and then you end up with clean grates. Um, I didn't do it this time, but you can, of course, every time you grill, um, brush them, uh, rub, the, rub the grates down with a paper towel that's sort of uh, saturated with oil. Um, and if you're really doing something sensitive, like say fish that you're afraid is going to stick um, and tear up, you can do that multiple times. So you you brush on oil, wait wait uh, 20 seconds or so, brush on some more oil, wait another 20 seconds, brush on some more oil. And what that's going to do is it's going to build up a layer of seasoning, very similar to um, how a carbon steel pan works or a, or a cast iron pan. Um, that way your fish is not going to stick. All right, this guy's probably ready to flip. Looking good. These are seriously, um, I mean, seriously the best, the best veggie burgers I know of. Um, you may, you may disagree, but I defy you to try them and tell me that they're not delicious. <laughs> All right, you know what else I decided to do is I'm going to take some of those chilies I had and do this sort of in the style of a green chili cheeseburger. Chilies on top. There's a slice of uh, pepper jack that's going on top. And my burger, I'm going to spread this chipotle mayo on the bottom. If you like your mayo a bit tangier, you can also, by the way, add a little lime juice to it flavor goes real well with chipotle. I got some onions and then uh, that's just some arugula from uh, from the garden. You can use whatever you want. I'm going onions and arugula today because that's what I got. This burger by the way, I, you're not, it's a little hard to tell from all the cuts I did but it's gonna cook for a total of about five or six minutes. And that is done. So three to four minutes on the first side just a couple minutes on the second side. That's how I usually like to do my burgers, veggie or not. Um, cook them most, cook them a little longer on the first side than the second side, so that you get some really nice searing on that first side, um, and then you flip them over. Uh, and the second side, you kind of just do do there to get some color, a little bit of color on the outside, um, and to let them cook, cook through. But I think it's better than letting it sort of them flipping it over and getting sort of mediocre searing on both sides is to get really good searing on one side. All right. This looks good to me. Oof, she is a beaut. So what this really does is it solves that kind of mushiness problem that a lot of um, veggie burgers have. Mmm. It was good. Come on, you want a little? Come on, guy. Mm. Come here. <laughs> good boy. Good boy. I think Shop is in the room with my wife, um, who's. Alright guys, gals, non-binary pals, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.